The IET are very privileged to have been invited to the Scottish Power Energy Networks Demonstration Centre at Cumbernauld in Scotland. The purpose of this visit is to witness, in practice, the serious effects of neutral current diversion on a protective multiple earthing network, known as a PME network, should there be a failure, such as an open circuit in the protective earth and neutral conductor, known as the pen conductor. The pen conductor is more commonly known to distributors as the Combined Neutral and Earth Conductor, CNE. Let us first look at what a PME supply is and the function of a pen conductor. In a TNCS arrangement, the earth and neutral are combined in the same conductor from the distribution transformer up to the consumer's installation. Once the electrical supply is terminated into the service head, the pen conductor is split into two terminals, one is neutral, the other is earth. This is the most common earthing arrangement in the UK. It is also called PME, protective multiple earth, because it could have more than one source of earth electrode along the length of the buried supply cable in the street. To take us through the demonstration, we have earthing systems expert Gordon McKenzie of Scottish Power Energy Networks. Okay, so by way of introduction to the, uh, the test rig, this is simply two single phase supplies to two adjoining properties. Uh, the properties share a common bond via the water pipe in the middle. So we have property to the left L1, and the property to the right is an L L2, and they share a common, common neutral connection. So effectively a pen conductor for the neutral. We, we have the lights for load purposes on this uh, demonstration. And for demonstration purposes, the test rig itself allows me the, the ability to break the neutral and the service supply to that property. It allows me to break the neutral and the service cable to this property. And it also allows me to break the main neutral to both properties in the bottom switch there. Okay, so what we're going to replicate here is simply the testing that we would have carried out in that type of situation. And today, the, the, the testing that we expect most DNOs and meter operators to, to carry out at, at the service position. We will include a wee bit of additional testing with the earth and beans test, because we know we're speaking to the rest of the industry about this particular one as well. So without further ado, uh, the neutrals are all intact, so we will uh, continue testing at service position one. So Andy's basically isolating the consumer unit. Mains isolator switch. And then we remove the, the cutout fuse. So we'll expose the neutral earth terminal and the, the, uh, the earth block there as well. Okay, we'll test the incomer first. So we're just checking the supply in the, the, the incoming side, just prove that the test lamps are working. Live neutral, live earth, neutral earth, and that's exactly what we'd expect, expect to see there. We're quite happy with that. We also, because it's a TNCS, a PME supply, we prove polarity in the incoming side. And we're quite happy with what we've seen there. So we've got the correct polarity uh, and the network's in, intact there. Additional tests that the, the meter operators and that we expect to do at the moment though, and they will test the pipe work. So we additional test those, uh, just to test the extraneous metal work. Using a contact voltage indicator initially, we're just testing any metal work that's connected to the system there. And additionally, the guys will use the wee non-contact voltage indicator as well, so we can do that as well. And there's nothing there that's causing any, any concern whatsoever. I'm quite happy with the test that they're doing there. At this point, we would uh, carry out an earth and beans test at source, and that involves disconnecting the, the customer's main earth. And we would carry out the earth and beans test there. And you'll have to take my word for this, that the, it passes. Uh, we are in a building, so that's not connected to a TNCS system as such. But we absolutely get the readings that we would expect there slightly higher than normal, it's about 0.8. Okay, so that would confirm that everything we've done at that service position is intact and we're happy uh, with what we found in the supply side on this particular one. So for demonstration, we'll, we'll put it back exactly the way we found it, so if we can reconnect the customer's earth. These are the type of tests that are carried out by the DNO operatives to ensure that the circuits they are working on have been isolated and the risk of electric shock has been reduced.
Here we can see that the pen CNE is intact and is not damaged. And again, simple repeat of the test, just prior to re-energising again, but just so we're satisfied ourselves that we're quite happy to put the fuse back in again. Reinserted, mains isolator switch switch back on, supply restored, everything happy, we're all, we're all quite happy for that. So we'll repeat the exercise, this time uh, for the purpose of the demonstration I'm now going to break the service neutral to the adjoining property, which involves flicking the, the, the switch there for that. In the demonstration we can see that the pen CNE has been disconnected by the use of a switch, however in real life this could be caused by a number of scenarios including corrosion, mechanical damage or overhead lines being hit by trees. We can see here what the switch is replicating. First thing you'll notice with that is that the customer's supply has actually stayed on and the, the light remains energised at that particular point. I would ask Andy just to repeat the exact same test that we carried out previously at that service position. Extraneous melt work again, no indication there's anything abnormal going on there. Non-contact and contact indicators all pretty much telling us that we're okay there. Consumer it switched off, isolator switch operated, and a cut out fuse removed again. And throughout that hole, you will appreciate that the customer next door has remained on, on supply for the whole, whole time. So we repeat the test in the incomer. Prove that the lamps work. Live neutral, live earth, neutral earth, just exactly what we would expect to see again. Looking at the voltage indicator again to prove polarity and then come inside. And again, that's giving us all the positive indications we would expect, expect to see there. Again, we're going to repeat the earth and pins test at this point. So Andy will disconnect. I mean, earth conductor for the proper L1. And at that point, we lost the supply to the proper next door. So none of the testing that we had done up to that point had indicated that that earth conductor there was acting as the, the neutral conductor for the adjoining property. And we'll ask Andy to carry out a couple of tests at this, including the earth looking pins test in the, the incoming side. And we'll get the same result again on that. We'll get a positive on the earth look. We'll get the wee sound there. Look. So that's us confirmed that the earthlink pins test on that side's intact and everything's okay. We get Andy to repeat the extraneous metal work test now as well. While the customer's disconnected, we'll use the voltage indicators here. And at this point, you'll see a remarkable difference in the, the, the indication. That includes the pipe work, the metal consumer unit. And if you use it to the main earth conductor as well, I'll give a positive now. So we have effectively opened the neutral in the property next door. If we use the test lamps at this point as well in the incomer, so remember we, we have a single phase service position at this point. And if I did test between the incoming side and the earth conductor, you'll notice that the blue light's indicated and that's 415. So we've actually testing across phases at that particular one. So having, having did all this, we'll ask Andy to reconnect the earth. It's obviously under live conditions now. Andy will reconnect the earth. And we would have restored the supply to the property next door. And we might never have been aware that we'd interrupted the supply to that property. It may not necessarily be next door. It could be in a, an upper floor or whatever. Uh, but if the customer had phoned in as an off supply, they'd just phone back in and say it's come back on again. So whether we'd even respond to that, no, I'm not, not quite sure. If Andy repeats the test and then come inside again, you'll see that 
it just returns absolutely back to normal again because he's restored that the earth back into circuit. Testing polarity again, fine. Metal consuming it even. Clear again, pipe work, clear again. Non-contact one, gives us the exact same reading again. So what did we miss? So the voltage indicating equipment that we're using uh, to identify that issue in that particular property existing in that property failed, failed to identify that. At the point that Andy disconnects the earth, uh, we may or may not have seen load on that particular one, depending on what was going on in the adjoining property, wherever. So we may may not have seen it, but there probably isn't an electrician that hasn't seen that at some point in his past without necessarily un uh, fully appreciating what it was. And we return everything back to its normal condition again. So what did we do that was different in the Galashiel situation was, as our knowledge improved on that and we realised what we were seeing, we effectively asked the guys, before they did anything in that property, was to use the clip-on ammeter and put that round about the main earth conductor. So if we went back to the initial stages and the entering in this property, we get a clear indication on that that current is flowing through the, the conductor, which again then indicates to us that the equipotential zone in that particular property is compromised by current either importing or exporting, but we're getting a positive indication for this property that it has an alternative path, path to go. And that particular uh, test there will be introduced into our testing uh, as we go forward. Uh, we need to change our safety rules or live working rules to introduce that, but that's already been trained to our staff. Uh, and at this point, before Andy did any tests, he already had an indication now that we have an issue in there that all the other testing wouldn't identify. Okay, as part of the demonstration as well, uh, what, what we like to do is we'll break the main neutral, just simply for a wee demonstration as well. You'll notice a slight dip in the lights, but it's a balanced load at the moment. It's a balanced load, simply because we've got the, the you know the two light fittings acting as a load in there. So it's effectively at the moment working without uh, a neutral conductor at all. Uh, we can introduce very quickly additional load into the, the, the circuit as well via the wee heater. We'll do this fairly quickly, but if you keep your eye on the lights, uh, the minute we unbalance the load you'll see the voltage increasing dramatically in the L1 property, which is in line with what we'd expect, expect to happen there. For more information on the subject of pen conductor failure and neutral current diversion, please visit the IET website.